21st Century Fox making another attempt to acquire what it doesn't already own of B Sky B. Then the deal would give Fox control of a pay TV network spanning 22 million households. Bringing together Sky News with Mr. Murdoch's UK newspaper title would give them much concentration of media power in fewer and fewer hands. Last week, Rupert Murdoch moved one step closer to getting a bigger piece of the media pie in Britain. He wants full control of Sky, the country's largest privately owned broadcaster, and has informed the European Commission of his plans to acquire, through 21st Century Fox, the 61% of Sky that he does not already own. But before this case is heard in Brussels, Murdoch faces hurdles in the UK. The decision is now in the hands of the cabinet minister responsible for media, Karen Bradley, who must decide this week whether or not she wants to rule on this case herself or pass it on to the UK's broadcasting regulator, Ofcom. And this is not the first time that Ofcom has seen this proposal. Back in 2011, Murdoch's buyout of Sky was all but assured until the phone hacking scandal broke at his newspapers and, feeling which way the political winds were blowing, the media mogul withdrew its offer. That was then, this is now, when Rupert Murdoch will tell you that he now has his house in order. He has shut down the worst offender, the disgraced tabloid, the news of the world, and booted out those rogue reporters. Plus, with the deluge of new news sites in today's digital environment, Murdoch would have you believe that media plurality in Britain is no longer a concern. The question is, do you believe him? And should Ofcom, if the case gets there, believe him? Our starting point this week is London. News stories tend to be about change. Ultimately, though, this one isn't. In the five-plus years since Rupert Murdoch first had this deal in his sights for full control of Britain's biggest subscription broadcaster, the country has new leadership taking it, after the Brexit vote, in a new direction. What hasn't changed? Murdoch's appetite for growth, his ambition. They are undiminished. This takeover really matters to the Murdoch media empire. And the reason it really matters is that this is unfinished business. Whenever you talk to people, you say, Rupert Murdoch's trying to buy Sky, and their reaction is often, doesn't he own it already? Well, he doesn't, and he wants to own all of it, because consolidation at the moment for media companies is the key word. Rupert Murdoch and Fox are already the biggest shareholder in Sky. They own 39%. But any increment in increasing Murdoch's power within the British framework for the British public um, should, be, should be looked at seriously. It's an enormously significant uh, merger proposal, uh, both in terms of media ownership, media plurality, and all the kinds of issues to do with concentration of power that go along with that. And you have to consider the kinds of influence and power and, and crucially access that the Murdochs already have. The full takeover of Sky is something the Murdochs thought they had in the bag long ago. In 2010, the former government of David Cameron, which the Murdoch press supported, was prepared to let it happen and sent the deal to the regulators, Ofcom, to be approved. That was before the phone hacking scandal exploded, exposing the corrupt practices of an organization led by Murdoch's son, James, forcing the family to pull the proposal off the table, temporarily, as it turns out. In 2011, they very nearly got there. I mean, they were really within inches of actually closing the deal. And then, out of nowhere, the hacking drama exploded and, you know, the, the world completely shifted. This is the most humble day of my life. And the argument now is we are a different organisation and they have divided the two companies up. So there is News Corporation with the newspapers and there is Sky and Fox, the television entertainment business. It's quite a difficult argument to make given the management of that company is James Murdoch. James Murdoch, once head of News Corporation, during the 2011 bid, what the Murdochs are arguing is that they should just be allowed to complete their unfinished business. Should the case be referred to Ofcom, the regulator is expected to study the impact the Sky takeover would have on media plurality in the UK. Murdoch's News Corp already has 40% of the newspaper market, and the Sky deal would give him more control on the television side. We tried repeatedly to interview someone from Sky or 21st Century Fox, but no one was made available. The news organizations would only speak to us on background, but they did send us this infographic, 
illustrating the way things have changed since 2010. The graphic traces the story from the original bid without a mention of the phone hacking, the convictions, or the judicial inquiry that followed to where it is today. The graphic makes the case that in 2017, given the evolution in the way news is consumed via Facebook or Twitter, for instance, there is greater plurality. But there's a big difference between a new means of distribution and a new news source. There is an assumption that people today are getting their news from an ever-widening range of news sources because they have access at the click of their fingers to an almost infinite horizon of news websites, broadcasters, press, etc. available on their phones any time that they wish. But if you actually look at the sources from which people are getting their news, how much has really changed? Most of the news which people consume uh, in the UK are still coming from the same outlets as they were six years ago. So I think the debate on plurality will be really interesting and it's quite a difficult one for the regulator Ofcom to unpick. The Murdochs are not the only ones with unfinished business to attend to. There's also the Levison Inquiry, part two. The first judicial probe into the relationship between the press and the powers that be was limited in scope because there were so many legal cases still before the courts. David Cameron promised a second inquiry. When I set up this inquiry, I also said there would be a second part. A deeper investigation into the press and the police. However, the May government appears eager to avoid reconvening the inquiry, which would suit Rupert Murdoch just fine. Murdoch has the kind of access to number 10 Downing Street that other tycoons would kill for. In 2010, in David Cameron's first week in office, he met with Murdoch twice. On her first overseas trip as Prime Minister, Theresa May had just 36 hours in New York, but devoted some of that time to Murdoch. The Prime Minister's office says the sky bid was not discussed. It is not clear if part two of the Levison inquiry was. They tried to say that this was just sort of happenstance. She happened to be in the offices of the Wall Street Journal, which of course he also owns, um, and bumped into the proprietor. That slightly beggars belief, I think. You know, a woman with a 36-hour stopover in New York and a man with a global media uh, business don't just happen to bump into each other. The one thing that hasn't changed is what seems to be almost an unwritten part of the job description for Prime Ministers that they need to meet regularly with Rupert Murdoch. Far more often, not only than any other media elites or executives, but anyone else full stop. You look at the major banks, um, you look at the huge oil companies and chemical companies, um, all of which have a huge impact on Britain's GDP, have a huge impact on jobs, they don't get anywhere near the kind of access that Murdoch gets. One final point on Levison Part 2. It is often reported that one of the reasons the inquiry is unlikely to happen is the government's preoccupation with Brexit, Britain's impending departure from the European Union, the idea that the Prime Minister does not want to antagonise the papers whose support she needs during the talks with Brussels. Lost in that logic is the contention held by many that without papers like Murdoch's clamouring for a yes vote, the referendum, which was close, could easily have gone the other way. So now, an inquiry into the relationship British newspapers have with the government and the police, which was promised, will probably be shelved because of another story those papers helped make happen. Unfinished business does get attended to in Britain, if not the government's, then Rupert Murdoch's, and sometimes their agendas coincide.